Hello everybody, welcome back to Best Life and Beyond. We made it to Mammoth Lakes, California. Yes, this is our final day on vacation. Yeah. And we decided to stay the night in Mammoth on yeah. our way back so we can kind of do a little bit more exploring today. Yes. And visit some of our favorite places. Which would include what's behind us, the Stove Restaurant. Yes. A staple here in Mammoth for over 40 years. This place is on Old Mammoth Road. We come here anytime we come to Mammoth for breakfast and it never, never disappoints. Uh, I'm very excited, I'm starving. Yes, the last time we were here, it was really cold out. It was. And now we're here and it's almost 90 degrees. And the cool thing about the stove is they've adjusted uh, very easily to this, all the new rules and restrictions. They've got a lot of seating outside now, as you can see with all these tents. Uh, but you can still eat inside, which is where we love to eat because the decor is awesome and kind of old school. So, uh, Especially since it's lower capacity. It's only 25% yeah. capacity, so basically almost every other table. Yeah. Lots of space. We think we can make it happen. Yeah, and then after breakfast, we'll see what we can get into uh, scenic-wise. You know, this has been the pattern for us. Have a nice breakfast somewhere and then go see what the day has to offer. Yes, and then of course we'll include the drive home and some couple stops that we make or if we do or don't. Yeah. So you can see. Yeah, so uh, let's go eat. Back at the stove. Yay. I made it finally. I love the little entry with the stove. Literally. The, stove. the last time we were here it was winter. It was. It was cold. Look at they've got Jake's family maple syrup. It's only a dollar fifty with the breakfast. A little stir for you there. Thank you, I'm, sir. I'm the official stirrer. I stir it up. You do. Cheers, Katie. Cheers to our final day of vacation. May it be as glorious as the last one. The cool thing is that they are keeping all the tables inside separated. Like, it's like every other table. And like, there's a table across from us that's not even filmed. So they're doing a really good job of, of the indoor, aka. Katie says, also known as 25% capacity. This signage kind of fits us here, uh, Katie. Remember, as far as anyone knows, <laughs> we're a nice, normal family. <laughs> we're a nice, normal family. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> We love these coffee cups, by the way. Um, just the color. Hey, people get two different colors, and it's, I don't know, just classic coffee shop uh, colors, I think, you know? That's so what? Cool. Yeah. You got a good vibe. You gotta love the decor and the little little bay windows and looking out into the mountains and the, the trees out there. It's just a classic place. It's almost like you're at a, at someone's home a little bit, you know. There's even a spatula chandelier, Katie. I think that's something you would enjoy. A spandelier? A sp <laughs> I've always wanted a spandelier. But it's got all your ladles and appropriate things hanging. I guess that's something that you would have in a kitchen anyways. It's not like supposed to be a chandelier, but like I think the way they do it, it's kind of cool. It's more decorative. It makes sense though, because what I would is like, I like when you can like hang pots and pans and ladles and stuff. Yeah. Easier to grab, easier to see. Yeah. That's what I'll have when I have a giant kitchen someday. Oh, of course, yes. Is that how you display your rolling pins on the wall? No. I wouldn't do that. Really? I like that. I know you like it. I like it too, aesthetically pleasing, but... All right, now's that time when we show you what we got. Look at that. So we got the uh, skillet. It's the Sierra Sunrise skillet, but instead of ham, I got bacon. But it's got like grilled onions, peppers, potatoes. Cheddar. And eggs. And eggs. In a, in a skillet, Katie. In a skillet. Get right off the skillet in there. And then, of course, to balance it out, the Belgian waffle, the big daddy, the one that, uh, kind of my favorite type of waffle, to be honest it's with you. It's really light and crispy. That's what I like. Spread some butter on it. And they even brought a little salsa for my uh, skillet, which I'm pretty excited about, actually. I'm, I'm I like that you keep calling it your skillet, as if, like, it's all yours. Well, it was Welcome mine. Welcome to the share table. Right. This is what we do in the share table. I think it, the origin of the idea of the skillet came from me, so I take full credit for the uh, and the art direction. Although, and the art direction. Although the excessive amount of butter goes against my. Well, you know what? I was trying to get some of it off of it. <laughs> okay, well, that's a oh boy. Not too much better, surprisingly. That is a light, crispy, primo waffle, A+. plus. All right, skillet tasters. Mm. 
So I made a good choice, is what you're saying. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. all right. This is like our perfect breakfast. Kill it with the skillet, Katie. Heck yeah. Oh yeah, big monster bite. Mm. Right, this is really good as usual. We love the stove. And can we just say that uh, the staff here is amazing and they work really hard, especially now. It's a lot harder with all those tables outside and the distancing and all the people and they're doing such a great job and they do it with love and it's just, you know, this is why we come to the stove. Look what I noticed behind the cashier. Look who is right there representing at the stove. Even Mickey Mouse comes here. It's his favorite spot. All right, breakfast was, oh my gosh. What a good what a good end to our breakfast series uh, this week. <laughs> I know, I was gonna say, we've had four straight days of epic, delicious, unique breakfast. And now we head up to the lakes, passing some shimmer trees, as Katie calls Yay, them. Yeah, my shimmer trees. There they are right there. They're and so uh, it is hot. It is upwards, I, I think it's up in the 80s at least right now, and it's yeah, only 10.30 in the morning. Yeah, almost 90. And, uh, you know, we're on the mountain. We're at like between seven and 8,000 feet and climbing. We're gonna head up to the lakes and see what's going on. We just thought we'd gravitate that way and uh, we didn't want to hike, it's so hot. So we figured just like drive around, check it out, you know. I feel like at least just get some mammoth, yeah. mammoth exploration, if you will. Yeah, look, you can see the mountain up there. Normally covered in snow in the winter time, obviously, but it's so weird to see it like that. I don't know why, but yeah, it's like you mentioned too. It must be a hot year because the you know normally you'd see a couple little patches of snow. Yeah, like I know it's late in the season, but yeah, there's there has been seasons where the snow on the top, little patches of it, little glaciers lasted throughout the season. Not this year. We just pulled off for a second to check out this view. Well, we missed this last time. We wanted to, but it was so packed. Yeah. We wanted to come and sit up here and like look down because it's, I mean, it's gorgeous. We actually kind of did a little walk hike in there. It was raining though. Yeah. Remember I had this stuffed binky into my jacket. All right, we made it to the, uh, the dead zone of Horseshoe Lake. Well, what I mean by that is you see all these dead trees. It's a result of uh, too much CO2. There was an earthquake here back some years ago that created some cracks and fissures that now release a lot of CO2 up here and that's why these trees have a difficult time surviving. We're gonna walk down here because last time we were here, we kicked it on the shoreline, we had Binky with us and- uh, I don't even think we filmed, but we put it on our like Instagram and stuff. Yeah, but the view that we're gonna show you right now is gonna kinda, well, it's shocking us because of, of the past. I don't know if we can find a picture of it, but anyways, this whole section was lake yep. and that giant tree that you see there with that stump was in the water and that was kind of a, a, a big picture spot. Everybody was going up there and to take pictures. Because it was half in the water, the yeah. end of the stump. Wow. So, so this yeah. whole section was filled with water and it's dry. Now it is September and you know, this has been sitting without runoff for quite a bit of time. As you can see, no snow left in the high country. We've sat right here. We actually like had a um, a blanket and we sat right here. And then the water was like literally right here. Yeah, kind and of right at the here. stumps, right? Yep, right at the stumps. Yeah. Because this was sticking out of the water. Yeah. Wow, that, that is mind blowing. Yeah, like where those people are walking, they'd be totally underwater right now. Oh yeah, completely submerged. Uh, what a crazy thing. Because people were jumping off some of the stumps into the water. Yeah, the, actually that one you're looking at right now, people were jumping off into yeah, that. Yeah. But you can see in the uh, in the backcountry there that that peak. You see that little strip of snow up there. There is a little bit of a glacial situation happening still there. Just the last little bit, just a little bit that made it through that hot season. So it's almost like one part of the horseshoe because this is Horseshoe Lake, right? It wraps around like a horseshoe. Yeah. Or is it this way that's the horseshoe? I don't know. That's what I do not know. I mean, you can tell that it was lake because of it's all sand and you know. Yeah. But you can see the previous water line. Yeah, you can kind of see it. At the bottom there, 
probably the most recent, maybe a month ago, that might have been there a little bit. I mean, this could be a yearly thing on, on these hot years where, you know, the snow pack wasn't super heavy. Yeah, it's crazy to think that stump was in the water right there. That is so crazy. I think, yeah, because the root's coming out of the ground. I have a picture of you and Binky sitting. Is that behind oh, no, it? Yep, this so. is it. All right, lined up the shot right there. There it is. Pretty cool. Memories. I know, it's so hard not having Binky right there. Peace out. <laughs> there she is. And she was sitting like literally right here in that little spot. Hard to believe that was in the lake and that this whole thing right here just feet away from where I'm standing was filled with water. So here's another angle showing uh, we'll dissolve into uh, Binky. There she is walking up the hill there. There was a lot more snow in the background too at that time and that was in July. And back to what it looks like now. There it is. That was really hard. That was. That's like very like emotionally difficult, but kind of nice. Yeah. Like I'm happy that we had Well, we can always come here. It's one of her spots. So. Yeah. <laughs> Oddly, and like at the time we didn't realize like, you know, it wouldn't have been the best thing with the elevation for her, but yeah. she was such a champ. Like that's what we're talking about. Yeah. You know, but it's so cool to see it like the lake completely almost dry. It's so weird, Like huh? how different it is. Yeah, look at that. One last look. And, what a weird uh, thing. What a weird thing. What a weird thing. All right, let's go to some water. Yeah. Just wanted to come to this little creek and get that sound and that feel. This is feeding into Lake Mary, which we're gonna show you in just a minute, but just enjoy this for a second. Came up to Lake Mary. There's the boat ramp over there in the back. And then looking back towards Mammoth Mountain, the backside of Mammoth Mountain, and there it is right there. What a beautiful lake. Would this be considered a babbling brook? I almost think that this is more of a babbling brook than it would be a creek, but this is feeding right in to the lake via these giant logs. Look at that. Little bridge view looking back at Lake Mary. Look at that. Some stand up paddles, some kayaks. Looks like a lot of fun out there. Goodbye, Lake Mary. See you next time. You can definitely tell it's a lot more crowded. Yeah, I've not seen it this crowded up here in Mammoth ever. Me neither. Although it is Labor Day weekend. On top of the fact of, you know. On top of the situation. Yeah, how everyone's escaping. Yeah, um, because not everybody is back to work. And so, what else is there to do? Well, I think the idea though is like everybody's been stuck at home. Yeah. So everybody wants to do the complete opposite. Yeah. And you do, even though it is crowded up here, though, you still have more, like, distance from people. Yeah, and everybody's you know? pretty much adhering to that, and yeah. uh, for the most part. And uh, But it's nice. It's a really nice escape. It is. I get it. Um, I think it really, you know, you get so sick of, like, you know, the pavement and the street and, like, the yeah. same thing over and over again. Like, I feel like what we got here was just that. Just the driving around up here is, like, it, yeah, right it's, away. You know what I mean? The scenic driving portion of it yeah it's pretty amazing we don't have as much time so we're kind of just doing as much as we can in as little time as we have but just doing this drive and like looking around and seeing the views it makes it worth it and making our way back down into town it's such a pretty view so we're approaching the tunnels that go under the ski run of chair 15 over here on the far far left side of the mountain you can see the chair right there I don't know what they call it now. I know it's used to be number 15, but you literally ski over these tunnels, which is kind of cool. That is cool. Yeah. Hello, Shimmer Trees. Nice to meet you. There's the trolley. There's where you load your bike.
bikes on too and then they'll take you up the road and that's cool you can either ride up on the mountain or just take the trails down back into town look at how cool it is it's so nice to be back here last time we were here it was actually snowing yeah and so cold yeah i was freezing <laughs> All right, we decided to pull over at the village and uh, take a stroll. Last time we were here, literally, like Katie keeps saying, it was snowing. Remember how cold it was? Dude, I was so <laughs> cold here last time. I was like <laughs> freezing, but it was so magical. This place, like I said, you know, we were talking about on the live stream how like, yeah. certain places just, you know, it's uh, nothing against Big Bear. It's just that what happened here for me yeah. was my first real snowfall, so it was True. magical. Yeah. And it's that memory that kind of takes you, it separates it, you know? Yeah, forever. Yeah. Came into the general store, look how awesome this place is. Ooh, banana. Peanut butter. And <laughs> banana. banana. Look at the bears holding on. Welcome, guys. Look at the wine selections, ridiculous. Welcome to bear country. Yes. So you know like how you use utensils to serve salad and pasta? These are bear claws, but like, you would t I'm gonna use two of them, but you would two. serve your salad. Right. As Which bear is claw. super functional, but yet all, at the same time, bear claws, that is, that is so pretty cool. brilliant. Because, yeah, you would normally use like a. You're trying to replicate that the whole time, yeah. Yeah, there it is. Bear paws, pasta, and salad servers. $18.99. You know who would use that? I use antlers oh. in all of my decorating. Yeah, that's Gaston for sure. 10 points for Gaston. I like that. If you're lucky enough to live in the mountains, you're lucky enough, Mammoth Lakes. Not only do they have just regular general store stuff, like a market, they've got this, they've got this crazy candy section. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Candy necklace, candy bracelet, ring pop, all your candy jewelry is available here. Everything you need for s'mores, there you go. The whole kit and caboodle right there. Okay, this makes me happy. They have Jiffy Pop. This is the classic campfire popcorn. They've made these for ever since I was a kid. I love the Jiffy Pop. You always end up burning some of the kernels, but it is so good. All right, headed up the steps up by the gondola, the village gondola. This is where it was, this is literally where we came. And this is where it actually snowed on me for the first time. <laughs> and it was so magical. Yeah, up, yeah, right up here by this. Uh, oh, I was so happy. And remember, they found us on the webcam. It was at that fire pit that we were hanging out at that night in the snow, and the fire was doing its thing. There's a building that scares Katie to death. One day we will get her on some lift access, some gondola access. It was cool when they built that here because it gave you a chance to get to that mountain via the town instead of having to drive up. And then noticing how they've adjusted to all the outdoor seating. Look at that. Everywhere. Normally this is just all pathway, but luckily they had enough space to do that because there's still ample room to navigate. Yeah. And then these guys. Last time we saw you guys, you had snow all over you. Look at that face, so misunderstood. You're just smiling, right? You're just happy, right? You're not gonna tear out my jugular. You're just saying hello, right? And then there's this face of like, whoa, hey, I'm just curious. You smell different, that's all. It's always cool to see the repurposed double chairs used for benches. And that thing used to hang right off the cable. Right there, Lakanuki. The Tiki Bar in Mammoth is uh, such a good spot. I haven't been in so long. Even in the winter time, we missed it. Look at these doors. So great. There's some of their featured drinks. Classic Scorpion Bowl, Mai Tai. The very, very scary martini on the end. Oh boy. Whoa, welcome Tiki. Hello, Tiki Tiki. Here's their hours. Sunday to Friday, three to six. Saturday, two to five. And then the prices are very reasonable for a $6 Mai Tai during happy hour. That's great. All right, leaving the village in Mammoth. It's so weird because it's so like empty and hot. Yeah. So it's like you don't associate this with like empty and hot. Yeah, true. It's almost like abandoned. It was really weird. Yeah. I don't know. Very eerie feeling being here right now. <laughs> All right, making our way out of town. I think we're going to stop in and grab a coffee. Pulling up to Stellar Brew. There it is, one of our favorite spots, morning, noon, night, whatever. Yeah, we're always here. <laughs> really good coffee, really good burritos, little beets <laughs> and things, and a cool looking building nonetheless. All right, you got, got your green smoothie, yeah, earth I wanted, smoothie. Yeah, I wanted to get a coffee because the coffee's really good, but then I was like, you know what? A 
smoothie because it's almost 90 degrees. Yeah. It feels refreshing and cool, and I threw some kale and stuff in there too, so it's really. What the kale? Dude, and it's getting so busy. You can tell everybody's escaping there yeah. for the weekend, for the holiday, and because of the heat. Yeah. And oh boy, we have a very hot mission coming up to get home. Driving through the desert. I got a nice coffee. It's a cold brew. Oh, it's got some so cream in good. there. Organic awesomeness. Uh, they really have oh, like yeah. their brew of or their brew uh, their roast. Um, oh, it's stellar. It really is. It really is stellar. You're right. They they uh, they do write by their name. They they honor their name. Looking back at the mountain, see a mammoth. As you'll notice, Spencer's not driving so, most of the time now. Uh, just because of his eye drops, you know, the four times a day. Yeah. Which, by the way, we've been doing much better. Yeah, yeah. About doing four times a day. Yeah, to the point of being annoying. <laughs> yeah. But you, yeah, he hates it. Like, I'm like, oh, it's time to put your eye drops in. He's like, ugh. Like it's a like, kid. Yeah, well. You're literally like a kid. But the good part about you having to have your eye drops in and all that stuff is you've had a lot of time to uh, get to do what I normally do is like look out the window. True. and and really take it in as yeah. opposed to just driving and That's focusing true. on that. So Absolutely. Know. There's the airport across the street. And then Convict Lake, there's the cut off the turn right there. Not too far either. Rolling up on McGee Mountain on the right here. This is where the original mammoth rope tow was. Dave McCoy and his buddies would come up from LA and set up this rope tow using a, a car, they prop it up on its on its wheels and take one of the wheels off and use that to propel the rope tow. I didn't even know what a rope tow was. Well, a rope tow is similar to a chairlift except it's just a rope going up the hill and you hold on and you ski uphill. And I would much prefer that than a chair. It's pretty difficult. I still would prefer that. I don't want to dangle. And as we get a little closer to where, where it was, now you can see the slope. It was, it was that slope right there. And I think you could see the pile of rocks that denotes where the base of the rope tow was. I'm looking for it. I forget where it is, but it's right along here. I love that old abandoned house. It's always been abandoned ever since I was a kid. Uh, but yeah, hard to believe that that's where Mammoth Mountain started. Is that it right there? Oh, there it is right there. There's the monument right there. And it was that slope, that triangular kind of slope right there. It was a it was a real special kind of unique situation, and it took them so long to drive up here because Dave McCoy was originally from Van Nuys in the valley, and uh, I believe he worked for the DWP, and he was up here taking measurements of the snow, which then reflects the water supply that then would go to Los Angeles, and so. That's how he found Mammoth and realized what a great spot that Mammoth Mountain was in. Orographically speaking, weather speaking, it it just the weather gets sucked into that zone and Mammoth gets a lot more snow than most places. Even Tahoe, Mammoth a lot of times Mammoth exceeds the, the snow depth of, of anywhere in the Sierras. So he knew what he was doing. Calculated, smart dude, innovative, you know. Uh, Persistent <laughs> wasn't an easy thing back then to, to do what these guys were doing. So, thank you, Dave McCoy, for having the inspiration to, to rip. Arriving in Bishop, site of the Mule Days festival situation. There's a horse cruising. Stay, stay cool, buddy. It's really hot out there. Seriously. Drink water while, while you're eating your hay. Temperature update, Katie. It is 103 degrees. Woo! I think you wanted to stop at shots if it's not too crowded. Yeah, yeah we are line. not going there. And check out that line around the building. We've never seen it like that, and I think we're going to pass. Sorry, yeah, shots. Yeah, not in 105 degrees. Yeah. Ooh, look at that old car. Oh, we can't do that. that that's, no, not, uh, not that long. It was all the way around the building. I've never seen that. And, and I get uh, that for social distancing yeah. stuff. I get that, but... Because it is pretty tight in there in that store. For sure. So, oh well. No doubt about that, but that is a, a no-go for show. Yeah, we just need to stop and get gas and uh, 
and then we'll be on our way check out the beautiful Sierra Nevadas come on is that not amazing with some cows in the foreground oh yeah I do love this drive still even though it's hot and hot <laughs> but it's beautiful I mean look at look at that meadow it's just all green and for the cows to eat. We might have to, I don't know if you're okay with it, but we might have to just make another stop at Frosty Chalet. Yeah, it's very possible. Oh well. Hey, 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 hey! It's way out there. Dude. Can you see it? You probably can't see it on camera. There it is. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Did I get you though? Yeah. That's, uh, by the way, he hasn't been recording for the last like three times, but I've already got him three times. She's already hey hey me, as I we're hey calling you. it the hey hey. Yeah. If you watch our travel video at the beginning of this series, the very first day, you know, I got her a little bit, she got me <laughs> more. Hey, 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 more hey. Hey, hey. Oh, man. <laughs> the thing is, though, driving up, you only got me like one time. I know. twice. But I regret ever getting you at all because now you've taken my game and exploited it negatively towards me, so. It's 108 degrees. All right, first sign of Mount Whitney. There it is, kind of in a weird angle, approaching Lone Pine. There it is on the, the two little crags, and then. Gee, Spencer, what is Mount Whitney significant for? Tallest mountain in the continental United States. I've always wanted to camp at the portal up there. We made it back to the Frosty Chalet, that's right. Katie will not allow this drive to happen without stopping here. Couldn't make the stop without it. Came across the street yet again to the park. There it is, but it's so hot. We're gonna literally just sit in the car in the shade right here. Yeah, sorry about it. And enjoy it, and we'll stare at Frosty Chalet from across the street. Yay. Where our cones await. Where our cones await. It's a two-part process always. I was starving. I needed my Frosty Chalet burger. They're, they're, they're like, what do I say about these? They're kind of, they're modest in their size and everything, but yet they're just what you need. Mm -hmm. No frills, just a really, really good burger. Nothing fancy. All right, she's back with her dipped chocolate cone already melting all over the place. Please be careful in the car. I know. Well, I got extra napkins. I'll be a gentleman and offer you another one. There you go. Thank you. By the way, this is a small. <laughs> and that's legit, that thing. I know. I was like, just like a kid-sized little... This is a small. And it's it's worth noting that not only can you get dipped chocolate, you can get peanut butter dip, mm -hmm. which I've not seen. I'm sure they have it at some places. I've just never seen it before, so that's pretty mm -hmm. cool. So I'm not having ice cream today just because sometimes I just don't... I don't know don't always uh, crave it or want it. Um, it's a special thing for me, so when I have it, it's like really awesome. And, it's a uh, problem in our relationship. I don't think it's a problem. Uh, you do. can have all the ice cream you want, and I'll buy it for you, whatever you want. I'm, <laughs> it's not... It's a problem. It's so nice just sitting here and... Having... Hey, 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 oh, hey, hey! Jeez. I almost choked on that ice cream. Roll. I know, my... <laughs> I don't like this game anymore. It used to be fun. It literally was like... <coughs> was it worth it? Jeez. Uh-huh. Oh my gosh. This is such a mess, by the way. Oh. I gotta think of a new one, because... Somebody said to take whoa when you see horses. Oh, that's that's good. I like that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, that'll get you. What? What? Mm -hmm. Okay, Frosty Chalet was amazing, but look at that. That is also amazing. That is Mount Whitney right there. Tallest peak in the United States, the continental United States, that is. And there she is. Obviously the sun is pretty bright, so hard to see a lot of detail, but so such a beautiful kind of line of sight from Lone Pine. It's also kind of the spot where I, I say goodbye to this year is because after this, they kind of start getting, you know, the mountains start getting a little bit smaller and then you get more into the desert proper and then, you know, back through the pass into LA or Anaheim. So. This is where we part ways with the Sierra Nevadas, but what a, what a fine way to do it with the beautiful Mount Whitney. As we leave the town of Lone Pine, the classic 
little town of Lone Pine. I'm always happy when we get stopped at this light because I can look at that, that old sign, the merry-go-round, which used to spin, but in its better days. Oh, look at that uh, bench is made out of snowboards. The Portal Motel, the Whitney Portal. I love the little motels, the ancient ones that are still around here. Mm -hmm. The Trails Motel, look at that. And then the museum of which I really want to go to. I, I always miss out on that museum, but we're out of here. Goodbye, Sierras. Ew. Another good one. And one of the craziest things about this area and Mount Whitney being right there, the Mount tallest Whitney. Mount Whitney, the lowest point is not too many miles away in the form of Death Valley over there, which the turnoff is coming up. Temperature check, Katie. What what do we got? 109 degrees. It's a cooker. It's a blazer. It's very hot, Katie. It's very hot. Yeah, it is. Currently 111. It was 112 a second ago. I wonder if this will be the highest temperature that we go through. It could get worse. Oh, I hope not. Stay tuned. Well, ladies and gentlemen, a little update for you. Look who's back to driving! Congratulations! Thank you. We are driving into the sun right now, thus it's uh, extremely bright. Yeah. But we have pretty much made it home. It's 90, are... 97 degrees now. We've got out of the gnarly heat of the desert. Yes. Uh, so I'd say we're about like 20 minutes from Orange County and yeah. uh, we want to thank you for flying with us. <laughs> Please consider us next time you travel. Anyway, uh, so thank you guys so much for watching though. We hope you enjoyed this trip. And again, just because our trip is over doesn't mean we're not gonna go on more fun adventures and always be doing fun things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got a lot planned for you as usual. Uh, but if you like this particular video, let us know by giving it a thumbs up. And of course, like I said, subscribe. Do it. You thank should. me later, thank me later. You absolutely should. And we'll see you next time on Best Life and Beyond. Bye bye everybody.